there. Welcome back. Man, you're just in time. This is our new LS1600. Our new metal cutting bandsaw. We got it from tricktools.com. And today's the day we finally get to retire this old thing and find out what it's like to use a real saw that's made right here in America. Yeah, but you know me, we're not just going to cut something for the fun of it. We got real work to do. We got orders to fill. Come here, check this out. Yeah, so we got us an order for one of our picnic tables, like this one here with the attached benches. I've already got a few sets of these legs welded up in there, but I haven't cut these struts yet. And this is a perfect chance to use that new saw. So as we get set up here, let's take a minute and do a quick comparison of these two saws. Now the first thing you'll obviously notice in these two saws is the difference in size. And while they're both designed to do the same thing, and that's cut metal, you can clearly see that one of them's got more capacity and speed than the other. Now another thing these saws have in common is they're both designed to swivel down onto the cutting surface that holds the material. And while both of these saws have clamps built in to hold your metal in place, this American Made Ellis works in about half the time. And while there's certainly a huge difference in the capacity of these two saws, take a look at this. This is a little half inch blade as in compared to what we have on our Ellis. A full one inch of metal cutting bandsaw blade. So the first thing we're going to want to do is double check our angles. Then we'll just lower and pivot this entire cutting head to achieve our desired angle. And of course we'll make note of this angle on this handy miter gauge for future reference. So let's get this thing plugged in and see how it runs. Holy cow, let's do that again. Now I don't know if you remember this old saw right here, but I dare say that this new Ellis will cut this whole stick of steel before that thing cuts one piece. But before we do that, let's take a minute to use this little hole right here and this 3 8 inch rod and we'll rig us up a little, uh, a little jig that'll Give us a point of reference to stop each piece on. Yep, that way every time we cut one of these, all we've got to do is slide it down until it hits this stop point, and it's all good to go for the next cut. Just like that, right there. So let's clip this little piece of one by two in here. We'll get this thing turned on. Let's go to work. So there you go, that's three full cuts to one. So I bet you're asking yourself how this saw does on these compound miter cuts. Come on, let's check it out. You know, one of the most critical elements to making these compound miter cuts is being able to keep the piece rolled up on that horizontal or vertical axis. And to do that, I've come up with this handy little jig. And it'll hold our stock piece in that position over and over. Hey, so while we're at it, let's take some of this inch and a half square and cut us up a couple dozen of these legs. <laughs> but there's one more critical element to this saw that I gotta show you. Check this out. 
Yeah, as you probably know, most metal cutting bandsaws are designed to cut up to a 45 degree miter. But here you'll see this LS1600 will go all the way up to a 50 degree miter cut. And it'll do that both right hand and left hand. And if you want to see why that's important, you're going to have to click subscribe now and come on back next time. This has been Mitchell Dillman with LogFurnitureHowTo.com and Colorado Rocket Logs. We'll see you again next week.